Okay, so in this video, I wanted to share a very basic pipeline for extracting information on color from images in ImageJ. And before I begin, I'll note that there's a PDF containing detailed instructions on everything I'm going to show you here, along with the ImageJ macro that I'm demonstrating. And uh, you can find that at the DOI link that's going to be in the description box. And so you can go ahead and download these. And in the PDF, I provide more specific information on how to very simply adapt this automated pipeline for your own images. So to help showcase this pipeline, we have here some images of grapes from which we want to extract some summary information on the color of these berries. So we can see by looking at these images that there's variation for color of these grapes, but how can we go ahead and quantify this aside from just simply looking at the images and visually seeing that they're different? So to help us quantitatively define the color of the grapes in these images, we can extract information from the three channels that make up the pixels uh, in the grapes of each image. And we can do this by breaking the image down into its composite channels that make up the color space of the image and getting some summary statistics for each of the channels. So I won't get into color theory in detail in this video, as I'm assuming those who are watching are already aware of this. But very briefly, most images are essentially three-dimensional matrices, where you have three different channels that are layered together to define color in an image. So for example, in an RGB image, which is a very commonly used color space in digital cameras and computer monitors, you have three distinct channels. You have a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel, for each of which you have gray values that are plotted on XY coordinates. And then these three channels are layered on top of one another to create what we perceive as a full color image. So beyond the RGB color space, there are also other ways to define color in images, such as in an LAB color space, or an HSB color space, where similarly to the RGB color space, you have three channels that are coming together to mathematically define the color in each pixel. So in this process I'm gonna share with you today to analyze color in our images of grapes, um, it can basically be broken down into three steps. Where the first step we need to do is we, we're just interested in the color of the grapes and not the background. So we're gonna to need to do what's called image segmentation, where we segment out the grapes from the background as we only care about the information that's in the pixels within the grapes. So when it comes to image segmentation, there's never really one right way to isolate your object of interest from the background. There are often many different techniques that you can use. And the pipeline that I'm sharing um, here uses one of the most basic techniques called thresholding. And this technique works fine um, if your images of interest are against a solid contrasting background. Um, but in scenarios that are perhaps more complex where there's not a clear contrast between the object of interest in the background, or maybe there's a lot of variation in the color of the pixels that comprise the object in the background, uh, those sorts of situations will require more advanced segmentation techniques. But in this case, for the images we're working with here, a basic thresholding technique will serve us well to, to extract the berries and separate them from the background. So once we go ahead and segment our image and pull out the berries from the background, the next step is we're gonna to need to convert the image which is an RGB image that's just taken with a basic digital camera. And we're gonna convert this image into other color spaces like the LAB color space and the HSB color space. And the idea behind this is that while the RGB color space is a very simple way to present color on a computer monitor, perhaps we can do better to define the variation in the color of these grapes um, in different color spaces other than RGB. Um, so we'll go ahead and get some information on the channels that make up these other color spaces as well. And then once we've gone ahead and converted our image into multiple color spaces, we'll then go ahead and separate each of these color spaces, the RGB, LAB, and HSB color spaces, and we'll separate those into the three components that make, each, make up each of these color spaces and get some summary statistics for each of these, um, for just the pixels that make up the grapes. So while we can go through this process step-by-step step for each image in ImageJ, this is gonna take a lot of time, especially if we have many images to analyze. So here we're going to use what's called a macro to help automate the job and ensure reproducibility of our work. So aside from saving time and effort in your image analysis, having a macro for your analysis allows you the option to always go back and run the images through this macro and get the same results every single time, which is an important uh, thing for research applications. So this very simple pipeline is going to use ImageJ or Fiji. Um, and for those who may not be familiar, this is an open source software that's commonly used for image analysis in many different research areas. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and open Fiji, which is the same thing as ImageJ. And to run this macro, I'm gonna go up to plugins, macros, and then run. 
And I have this macro saved on my desktop and it's called whole color macro underscore all components. And it's an IJM file, meaning it's a macro file for ImageJ. And again, you can download this macro um, at the DOI link that's in the description box and run this on your own computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this macro. And as soon as I open, it's gonna begin running and it's gonna prompt me. The first thing it's gonna do is ask me to set my working directory, which in this case, is um, a folder that I have saved on my desktop with all uh, several images of these grapes called demo one. Um, in this case, you'll just navigate to whatever folder you have all of your images in. Um, so I'll go ahead and navigate this to this folder, which is gonna be my working directory. And this is where my data is gonna be saved um, after the macro runs. It'll be saved back to this folder. And as soon as I hit open, it's gonna begin processing all of these image images. So what this macro will do is it's gonna open an image from the directory folder. It's gonna threshold that image to segment out the berries from the background and then clear the background so it's completely black. Then it's gonna separate the image into component channels for each color space. Um, and then we're gonna extract summary statistics for each channel and each color space, add these statistics um, to a CSV file and then move on to the next image in the folder. And this is gonna happen so quickly, you're not gonna really be able to keep track of every single step, it's just automating this entire process. So rather than having to click through with each image and do this process step by step um, by myself, I can run this macro and it will automate the entire thing. So we'll go ahead and hit open and it should begin running, opening the first image in the folder, thresholding, segmenting, collecting data, moving on to the next image. It seems like it messed up on that first image. It, it somehow identified the berries as the background, but um, hopefully all the subsequent images should process uh, well, and we can see here it's it's moving through each of these steps so quickly we can't really keep track, but it's yeah breaking everything down into the different color spaces, the different channels, and extracting all the data, which you can see posted in the results. That was the last image in the folder, so it, it's wrapped it up and exported that as a CSV file. So we'll go ahead and close out of our ROI manager, and our CSV file should be saved to that working directory. Here we can just see and review our images uh, for sort of a QC. We can see what was analyzed and what was considered background. So we can see in these images, um, these seem to have processed well, but that first image, it appears to have made a mistake and identified the berries as the background and was measuring the pixels, um, the white pixels that comprise the background. So we'll know that this was a mistake just by reviewing these images and we can go back and uh, run this again to correct it. And we also see we have our CSV file now uh, it's titled whole color measurements.csv. And what we have in this CSV file is for each image, we have a, a distinct row for every single channel for all three color spaces. So here we have for the first image, our RGB color space, uh, all the data for our LAB color space and all the data for our HSB color space. And uh, for example, with the RGB color space, uh, the first channel will be red, second channel will be green, uh, third row will be blue. Uh, I meant rows there. And we can see for these columns, we have the area in pixels that was uh, measured. We have the mean uh, grayscale values for each of these three channels in this color space, the standard deviation for these grayscale values, the modal grayscale values, the minimum, the maximum, and then the, the theoretical minimum and maximum for each of these channels in the color space, which in the RGB color space spans from zero to 255. So yeah, we have all our data here uh, and perhaps this is already in a format that would be uh, usable for whatever your subsequent analysis of these data would be. But for, but for me, when I look at this, this isn't, I'm not really satisfied with how this uh, image tray outputs this data. So what we have is we have nine rows of data for each image. For my subsequent statistical analysis, it would be more amenable if I had a single row for each image and all of these data were plotted as uh, distinct columns with all of these information um, separated out as columns rather than across nine different rows for the same image. So to help address this, I have put together an R script um, to help reformat our uh, data that comes out of this. And this R script is also available at the DOI link uh, in the description box for you to download and run. And so when you open up this script in R, um, I've commented it fairly well. So step by step, you can see what's going on with every single uh, step in the process and all of my comments uh, for those who may not be familiar with R are in green so these green lines where all we have all this text that's not uh, running code that's just comments so anything that's prefaced with a pound symbol is a comment just explaining what's going to happen in the subsequent uh, step 
So our first step in this image, and this is some in this script, is something you're going to need to change when you go ahead and use this for your own work. Is you're going to need to set your working directory. So I've set my working directory to my desktop, where I have this folder on my desktop, demo one, where it's going to find this uh, CSV file, uh, whole color measurements. Um, so this is uh, specific to my situation. You're going to have to change this file path to wherever you have this data stored on your computer. But once you set that up, um, you should be able to go ahead and run this script uh, the rest of the way to its completion. So we'll go ahead and set our working directory. Um, we're going to read in that file, we'll color measurements, and then we'll take a look at what it read in. And it looks like our file is complete. Everything looks good there. So I won't go ahead and explain everything that's going on with every single line here. Uh, that would take up too much time, but you can review this on your own when you download it and see what's happening step by step if you're interested. But we'll just run through each of these lines and it's going to write a new CSV file back to our working directory, which again was set as this folder on my desktop. Um, so it should save another CSV file to the same folder where you have all of your images and CSV file, as long as that was set as your working directory. And now we can see that we have all of our data uh, in a format that's really better for my subsequent statistical analysis. So uh, here we have a CSV file um, where, each, well, where each summary statistic, the mean, mode, minimum, and maximum for each channel in each color space is presented as a separate column for each image, which is presented as a distinct row. Um, so yeah, that's basically the, the pipeline. Um, and you can, again, you can go ahead and download this R script, I also have a PDF file explaining the R script in more detail and how it works and how you can uh, adapt it to your own work. Um, so the R script, the PDF file describing the R script, the ImageJ macro, and a PDF file explaining the ImageJ macro. Um, and I also give more information about thresholding and how to pick uh, the right thresholding for your own image set and adapting the, the macro to you, pipeline to your own situation. That's all available at the DOI link. Download that, take a look. If you have any other comments or questions, uh, feel free to add a comment below, and I'll try and get to that when I have time. Um, and I'll try and make some more videos about image analysis, hopefully in the future. So thanks for watching, and uh, I hope this was informative.